in this bonus episode time, Bronze of Modern Gods. I'm John. That's Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, John. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's bonus episode. You know what that means. We answer your questions. We take your comments. We try our best to address your concerns, <laughs> comments, and suggestions. And we also have the Instagram Market Watch with Ali from Elite underscore Comics 11. And everyone's favorite news segment, well, half of you. The comic book NFT watch. We have that coming up as well. A uh, quick reminder to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Bronze and Modern Gods. Visit our website at bronzeandmoderngods.com. Hopefully you can spell it better than I can say it. <laughs> and if you want to be stylish like this fine young gentleman right here, collecting casually on Instagram, sporting a Bronze and Modern Gods t-shirt, you can do that by looking at the description below or by visiting Bronze and Modern Gods and clicking on the T Public badge, and you too can have your own Bronze and Modern Gods shirt to wear to your next convention where you will be pelted with rocks and garbage. <laughs> Send us in a sample of the rocks and garbage so that yes, we can enjoy. You know. Hey, some of those gemstones go for a gems. Wait a second. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, we'll get to that in the comic NFT <laughs> section. But first, it's time for viewer mail. You've got mail. And our first piece of viewer mail comes from Major Blood, B-L-U-D-D, -D, very <laughs> 90s Rob Liefeld extreme, Major Blood. Love the romance in good girl books. Me too. I currently have a big run of old Marvel Margie books at the moment. There is an issue of Margie where Stan Lee appears that does sell for a bit of a premium. Uh, was into superheroes for so long, and I have all the big ones. Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men number one, Spidey 129, etc. Taking a break from hero books and focusing more on Golden Age sci-fi and good girl books. Major Blood, you yeah, pretty much summed up my collecting arc as well. <laughs> you know, after you check off a bunch of boxes, you kind of want to challenge, and I talked about that in last week's episode about oddball books in our collection. So good on you. I'm glad there's more weirdos out there uh, besides myself, although I do not like the competition. <laughs> yeah, Major Blood talking about romance books. That's I know, the, uh, the contrasting irony. I like <laughs> yeah. uh, my piece of mail is from Fred Bruno, friend of the show. Uh, Richard, there is a line of toys and models for Luftwaffe 1946, which is a, a book I was talking about the last show, to go along as display pieces for your books. You can find them on eBay. And sure enough, I went on eBay and I typed in Luftwaffe 1946, and there are a number of really cool uh, models of the airplanes in the series. And uh, I saw some painted, I saw some uh, plain um, uh, unpainted. But it is, it's a huge selection, and I, I, I wonder, given that there's a number of choices on the internet, are there people still still into this series? That's that's I'm impressed. No, there were people into it the first time. <laughs> this is completely flown under my radar, no pun intended. Uh, but wow, there was even model kits and everything based mm -hmm. on the series. Were, were there paperback books or something? Did this is this an adaptation? I know I, I'm going to do some more research. It looks like there was some uh, a game based on uh, on the the comic, and if that's the case, that would account for all of these scale models. Well, the gaming nerds—they ruin everything. Gaming nerds are the future, <laughs> and I say that as a former dungeon master, uh, game master for the Marvel superheroes TSR game, and Richard having been a Magic the Gathering nut when that first launched. Yep. All right, my next piece of viewer mail is from Comics Watching, and I want everybody to take a second and honor Comics Watching for his amazing avatar, the one, the only, Quasar, someone who knows how to uh, put the frosting on that cupcake to make sure that I pick his <laughs> viewer mail. Uh, brown nosing, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> one of the only Golden Age books I have is a Patsy Walker I found randomly at an antique store for $5, simply for the Hellcat Association. And my obsession with collecting Defenders, etc. Uh, I have a thing for 10 and 12 cent Westerns, me too. And I want to get into late golden, early silver romance, but nowhere around here sells them. You're preaching to the choir. The only place I find that era of Westerns is at one shop near me that sometimes puts them in dollar bins. What? Oh my goodness, wow. And I always clean them out, as you should. Uh, even in good, very good condition, 
uh, dollar investment in a 12 or 10 cent Marvel or Atlas Western will <laughs> uh, quintuple, septuple, octuple. What, right. What's 10 times your money? Uh, <laughs> Dizzy tuple uh, in Espanol. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, grab those if you ever see them in the dollar bin. And yeah, they're tough. That's why they sell so for so much on eBay because eBay is pretty much the only place that you can get this stuff because most shops and most dealers just don't have the space or the time or the knowledge to put up these romance books or these Westerns. They've always been kind of downtrodden. Richard, remember at the California comic con, uh, January, 2020, when I got rawhide kid number yeah. 23 for like 70 bucks. I mean, it's like a <laughs> book. So now, if you, if you see any to me, if you see a 10 cent book in a dollar bin, buy it regardless, because yeah. there is, I guarantee you, that if you go to the CGC forums, there will be somebody who is willing to pay you 10 times, 20 times what you paid for that book because they have been looking for that book for the past three years. Yep, there's a sucker born every minute, but the <laughs> end of the section is coming up later in the show. Uh, Richard, what do you have next? Uh, my next piece is from Nick D, another friend of the show. Uh, I recently sold it, but my oddest book in my collection was from Boneyard Press, a title called Jeffrey Dahmer versus Jesus Christ. Hey, kids, comics. <laughs> the wraparound cover depicted the two in a boxing match. Uh, the store is exactly as bad as you can imagine. Well, I had to see this. So I, I, I went ahead and did some research and found it, uh, a, a picture of the cover. It is pretty nightmarish. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine uh, the impetus to, to write this. Uh, but you know, Nick, you got me. This is this is by far odder than anything in my current collection. Who won? That's a that's a good question. That's you'll have to let us know, Nick. Who who won? I think I know, but just let us know. I have a feeling it was a draw. Um, the story is as exactly as bad as you can imagine. I have a really good imagination, <laughs> and I think it's going to be that bad. All right, we'll see. Uh, I'm follow up, Nick. I'm really curious as to how, the ending of this book. Was it like Superman versus Muhammad Ali? Uh, <laughs> did, did Dahmer like dampen his powers to make it a fair fight? Um, or did Jesus? Let's see. Uh, my last piece of viewer mail is from Scott Thompson. Surely not the Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall, but if you are, I am a huge fan. If you are not, I'm still a huge fan. <laughs> Gentlemen, it shows like this that really helps set your channel apart. I'm assuming he's referring to the our top oddball comics episode. How many hot key shows can you watch before your eyeballs glaze over after all? Uh, 14 is the end. <laughs> shows like this are fresh and fun. Keep up the good work. I hope you continue to grow the channel. Thank you. That Thank is you very much. the That's nicest awesome. comment I've read in weeks and scott we definitely appreciate that and thank you for that and if you want to help us grow the channel tell a friend as Bob would say there's my second barnaby reference <laughs> also drop a comment if you have a, a show idea drop a comment in the in the, and let us know and uh we'll definitely look it over if you have two show ideas drop a deuce wait a second all right what's your last piece of your <laughs> definitely not a deuce uh <laughs> my my next piece of mail is from Random Poster, uh, and it's I must have that D, uh, Department of Truth stamp variant issue, Richard. And I think he's referring oh, to there it is yes you know, this book right here, gorgeous book. Um, we got this from a friend of the show um, who sent who sent us a, a, a copy of the book. Really appreciate it. I love it. I keys, love it. keys and Grails on Instagram. We keys and to... Grails, correct. Uh, he included in the bag some some stamps, even a Doctor Doctor Doom sticker here on uh, wow. or a corner box here. Um, gorgeous book, I love it. I'm a big fan of Department of Truth, both from a spec uh, standpoint and from a comic book standpoint. So you can't have mine. Only 500 of those made, and uh, Keys and Grails was gracious enough to send Richard and I a copy of that. And, you know, we, we love free stuff. So send us anything you like. <laughs> <laughs> really, really appreciate it because uh, I had missed out on it. I, I didn't realize it was available until too late. So 
this is my only way of getting a copy. So I really appreciate it. I also take 50s in non-sequentially numbered bills in blank <laughs> envelopes uh, yeah. for my door. If you Write like. your request on a 50 and mail it into John. Leave it on the dresser. You know how this works. <laughs> All right. Uh, what? What's happening? <laughs> Well, it's the Instagram Market Watch with Ali from Elite underscore Comics 11. You know it. You love it. Every week we look at the top sales happening all across uh, Instagram. And let's go to the man right now. Richard, where are those dancing jazz hands of yours? Da, 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 da. And here's the man right now, Ali. What's going on, Ali? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Hey, welcome. Doing okay. Uh, Raleigh is here to share some books, but first, give us your spiel. <laughs> well, as, as usual, we're gonna uh, we're it's at elite underscore comics eleven. We are Instagram's premier consignment page. So just head over to our page. You'll see a bunch of awesome big books for sale. And if you need help selling a book, also DM us. We're happy to help. But as we usually do, I'm here today to uh, feature a few of the sales we've had in the past week or so. So I'll go ahead and start at the top. So the first book that I want to feature, um, it was a Marvel Spotlight, number five. It's the first Ghost Rider, 6.5, white pages, CGC grade. Uh, it sold for $21.50. Um, that, was a, that was a pretty sweet deal for some buyer. So. Oh, yeah. I mean... White page for for just for starters, the ninety day for GPA for that book is twenty seven ninety. So somebody got a smoking deal on that book. Would you say they were bone white pages? <laughs> ghost skeleton. Okay. Enough of that. Oh, John, you're you're on fire. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> what, what is the what is the uh, what's the news out there on a ghost ride on Ghost Rider? Like what what is the uh, I've it's heard all, the rumors, but it's all over the place. You know, uh, I always defend uh, Agents of Shield because I would think I was the only person that watched all seven seasons of that show. And they are. Yeah, I know. But they had the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider as part of uh, that show. And ever since then, I think it's a general rumor about all of the monster supernatural titles from the Bronze Age. There's uh, rumors of something going on with them, probably Disney Plus TV shows. That's why Werewolf by Night is on fire right now. Uh, Ghost Rider. I haven't heard anything specific about Ghost Rider. Nicolas Cage is waiting by the phone, uh, ready to answer. <laughs> He's in Spider-Man 3, right? Is Nicholas Cage in Spider-Man 3? Oh, okay. Don't do that to me. Everyone is. Yeah, who, who isn't in Spider-Man 3? <laughs> it's like, I will burn you with hellfire. Uh, my really bad Nicholas Cage. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad to see some Bronze Age up in here now. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's let's move to the next one. We got Batman. It's uh, Batman 181. It's the first uh, Poison Ivy. CGC 7.0 white pages sold via our page for twenty eight hundred dollars. Beautiful copy. Nice, nice. Yes, for uh, the GPA has a last sale at twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. uh, but this is a gorgeous book. Uh, I, you know, there's a lot of buzz going around the the combo of um, uh, Harlequin and Poison Ivy. So you know, maybe that, that's spawning the uh, the sale of this book. Well, there's that new Harley and uh, Ivy book that's out. I think yep. issue two just came out on Tuesday. And that seems to be, you know, with the uh, <clears throat> the uh, makeout covers, seems to be uh, getting a lot of people excited. Hey, I Don't knock the makeout covers. <laughs> I, I don't want to specify how excited they're getting over these covers <laughs> or in what way it's being shown. But uh, this is a tough book for one reason. Uh, it came out in the just the middle of Batmania in 1966 when the show was just on fire and it was a top 10 hit but the centerfold is a pinup of Batman and Robin so this book is notorious for missing that centerfold yep yep several you know that's always the first question we hear about the book and yeah guys i mean if it didn't have the centerfold and it was in a slab that would be noted or you'd see a green label so right <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's is very often missing almost like the tattoos on spider-man 238 oh. it, it was an innocent time when you could hang up a centerfold of batman and robin in your bedroom <laughs> and, <laughs> and 
Uh, yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> we'll move on to the last book. It's good to see a DC book. So let's just say that. All right. So the last one for today, it's Fantastic Four number 48. It's the first uh, Silver Surfer. CGC 5.5 off white to white pages. It sold on our page for $3,400. Yeah, I need to get one of these. Uh, 90 day for this book is uh, $3,392. So mm -hmm. it's right in line with GPA. Uh, this this is one of those books that once it hits, it's going to hit hard. So as soon as we have any kind of Galactus news, this is going to be the book to have. Also, besides the first Silver Surfer, the first uh, appearance on the last page of Hot Pants Galactus. I say Hot Pants Galactus because they colored his legs flesh color. So he's wearing a little skirt and hot pants. Uh, you know, it was in the 60s. Go, go, boots. Go, go, Galactus. <laughs> Yeah, and on Richard to Richard's point, I mean, this book it had its uh, it had its growing moments, but it really has relatively cooled down at the moment, and it's just a matter of time. So I don't blame anyone for going out there and trying to pick this book up right now. Yep, yep. Now's so, the time. Yeah. If they do it right in the MCU this time, I think this book will really explode. I mean, the last time Galactus was in a Fantastic Four movie, he was a giant cloud. Yeah, they can't do the giant cloud again. I, I can't see Kevin Feige agreeing to anything as gauche as that. I want to see a giant world spanning, you know, his his helmet coming up behind the curve of the earth. That's what I want to see. In hot pants. In hot pants. The the mouse did not cut that check to do things wrong. I think they're That's gonna right. Get it right. That's it absolutely nice. right. Class yeah. Stan and Jack. Uh God bless them. All right. Remind everybody where they can find you, Ali. Yeah, head over to at elite underscore comics 11 on IG. And, uh, you know, if you have a book to sell, we're happy to help. Awesome. We will see you next week. All right. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ali. Thank you, Ali. And now for our second market watch, everyone's favorite, hmm? the comic book NFT market watch. You know it. Half of you love it. The rest of you. Bye. We'll see you next week. Uh, no, don't stick around. Come on. Two new drops happened this week. Avengers number eight, the first appearance of Kang and Tales of Suspense number 52, the first appearance of Black Widow. Uh -huh. Finally, some keys are happening here. We're moving away from the random stuff, Richard. Thank goodness. Uh, Avengers eight was limited to 10,000, uh, unlike previous drops. And the uh, TOS 52 was limited to 30 K. So, uh, is Marvel pulling in the number of copies available? Yeah, because all the previous drops have been around 60K. Uh, there was one, I think it was What If, that was 35K. Uh -huh. So they're they're pulling stuff in. It's interesting. This uh, strategy seems to have worked. It may not be as much revenue for them on the outset, but the severely limited nature of the Avengers number eight drop seems to have goosed prices up across the board for all the previous uh -huh. NFTs, even for the commons. Avengers eight common is now $104. <laughs> this cost you $6.99 when you right. bought it. Right. Marvel Comics number one common is currently $33. That's up from $15 just last week on our market watch. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man is interesting, Richard. $18, uh, up from $7 last week. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, the only stragglers still are House of X number one and Marvel's number one, but even those are finally above seven dollars they're each at about nine dollars and they were five or six dollars last week so even the ones that people kind of shrug their shoulders at um they're 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 up a bit i have to wonder if the reaction to house of x and marvels is why they're really uh going for keys now and limiting the numbers no yeah you know they have to i know they have to mix some non-keys into this or they'll run out of keys uh, long before uh the you know they state the market so they're they're mixing in some of these other books but let's say you do sell one of your one of your books uh, and you've got now gems in your account. How do you turn gems into cash? Well, Vivi keeps saying that's coming. Uh, it's it's on the roadmap. I'm now hearing spring. I don't know how accurate that information is. So uh, caveat emptor, mm -hmm. uh, speak Latin. The uh, one thing you can do, though, for those of you who are wondering how to cash out oh, while Vivi gets that option ready. There was an eBay sale of 500 VV gems for $500 this week. Wow. One bought 500 gems off of uh, someone on eBay for 500 bucks. Uh, 
there was also a significant sale of the Future Imperfect Secret Rare that sold for $2,650 on eBay. But I'm putting another big caveat on this one because it, it was listed and sold twice this week. The okay. same mint number, the same Secret Rare. So I don't know if the first sale fell through and the guy listed it again and it sold or if there's some shady shenanigans going on. But I'm, I report you decide. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, as I said before, I think we're too early to see real uh, – the re prices really settle yet. Uh, so any, any of these really super high numbers, let's wait till next year. Let's wait till next March. And, and at that point when we've got enough, um, enough market movement behind us, I think we'll, we'll be able to see some more realistic prices. If you want to gauge actual cash sales, uh, go on to eBay – and do a search of completed sold items under the term Marvel VV. And you'll see like Marvel Comics number one commons are selling for about $25 cash, stuff like that. Here is what I noticed was very interesting. And the conspiracy theorist in me is going overtime here. You can do this search and get results on desktop only. If you try to do this search on a mobile device, nothing shows up. Why is that? That's a good question. It could very well be an eBay anomaly, and they could fix it here in in in, in, uh, in a bit if it's brought to someone's attention. Well, why would a search uh, a search term not work on mobile? Well, being, being a programmer, how is that even possible? There's different reasons why. There may be different API calls, and I'm trying not to get too technical, but there may be different sections of eBay that are doing these searches because the app needs certain kind of data while the website needs a different kind of data. So it could simply be something that has not uh, been updated correctly. Hmm. And okay. there, there, there may be a fix in, I would wait. I would, I'm rather than um, see too much nefariousness in this, <laughs> give an opportunity to straighten this out. Cause this is all new to everybody. Yeah. It, it, I just thought maybe they were blocking that search. Be, I don't know. I, it was weird to me. Yeah. It, it, it does eBay no good to, to block, block sales for these things. Uh, as long as the transactions are clearing correctly. Now, if, if they get a lot of, of chargebacks and a lot of issues with these kinds of digital transactions, I remember back in the day when eBay would not do straight up digital transactions, everything would have to have some physical good. And uh, I used to sell an ebook millions of years ago, and I had to mail out a physical CD with the ebook on it to my customers for them to be able to buy it uh, off eBay. So the fact, that, yeah, it's the fact that they're doing straight up digital sales and incurring the risk that happens when you do digital sales um, is is very interesting to me. So, I, I, but you know, once they make that jump, there's no disadvantage to them. There's no advantage to them uh, blocking a certain type of search. It's all money. Now, the Avengers 8 uh, went so fast because there was only 10,000. Uh, Richard was ready at the same time uh, to buy one. We were communicating over text. It was less than two seconds before it sold out. Yeah. So how did I get a common and how did I get a rare at the same time? I will tell you, I'm going to tell everybody a little secret now. I shouldn't, but I'm going to. My partner has a VV account. I have a VV account. We both got up. I sent him some gems from my account so that he could purchase at the same time. Mm -hmm. How do you transfer gems on an iOS device? You can't using the app. You can go to Safari at a website that I'm going to list you right here below, sign into your account and transfer gems that way. Okay. They will then show up in someone else's account. After that, we both hit buy at the same time it, when the clock hit zero <laughs> and we both got our uh, Avengers 8s and then he just transferred the one that he got to me. Well, I also, I was also in this situation. Um, I ended up getting an ultra rare I know, bastard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I just have a hard time. This this is like funny money to me. Uh, so I ended up putting my my uh, Ultra up uh, in the marketplace for 1,400 gems. In hindsight, I probably should have done more. Uh, it Someone bought it within an hour. Um, 
the fees on it meant that I cleared about 1,200 gems uh, once it's all said and done. But, but they're stuck in there. You know, there's I've got 1,200 gems now that are stuck in uh, the VV system unless I do, unless I cash it out using e eBay or some other transaction. Um, my my thought was there's there's a Silver Age book I want that costs about that much money. I would, you know, this funny money, I would trade this funny money for this real Silver Age book and I'd be totally happy. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I'll figure out how to get this money out of there, but or money, you get convert those gems into cash. Maybe have two eBay listings for 500 gems each. Yeah, but that means selling on eBay. I know. I know. Uh, and that's that's something that I have not done in um, over a year. So. Yeah. I know we even did an episode about it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if that's an option, you know, 1200 bucks. And the thing is it's 1200 bucks that I didn't have this morning. You know, I spent $700 for it. And then uh, the next thing I know, I've, you know, I've got, uh, you spent $7 on it, not 700. I'm sorry. You're right. I spent $7 on it and now seven, seven gems, 6.99 gems. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, if, it's it's a whole new thing to me. This uh, these things I I don't consider them comic books. Just like I don't consider uh, previews comic book. The preview magazines mm. they're they're something collectible definitely, but they're not comic books. And 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 to me, I'm a comic book collector. So these NFTs and other other things are interesting collectibles, but they're not the focus of what I collect. So well, we're always big proponents of financing your collecting with mm -hmm. your collecting uh yeah. you know selling books that you paid a little for for a lot more later and then buying stuff with that money i did the same thing here on vv i had a what if uh ultra rare uh at the time it was selling for 150 gems on the marketplace i put it up for 140 gems i undercut the lowest person <laughs> just to see what would happen it sold in five seconds Wow. And I have now 140 gems to play with. And I haven't spent a dime on VV since then. And I've gotten all these other uh, commons and other stuff that uh, these drops without spending any money. So that's what I'm doing. That's significantly less than having 1200 gems. But you know, that's a good, that's an interesting option. You know, if, and when they drop something that I'm more interested in, like, a, like an ultimate fallout four right. or fantastic four, number five, uh, I may be able to use those gems to buy an ultra rare or, or a secret rare, uh, one of those. So, so yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I would hold on to them for a while unless you really want to dump it, uh, after this week and seeing everything shoot up across the board, it obvious, it's obvious that there are many, many, many new people coming on, mm -hmm. which is making those early drops even more desirable and more expensive. VV even tweeted at someone, uh, during the week, that accused them of uh, letting bots take over. And VV was like, no, it was, it was basically paraphrasing. It wasn't bots. It was uh, 200,000 people trying to buy 10,000 of right. something at the same time. I have to say the, the way their system works and the, it's, it, it's based on blockchain. Um, I, I have a hard time seeing there being a bot problem with this. You know, not like there are with shoes or other things. I used it, to use the app to buy and the app is definitely not something that's easily hackable. Yeah, can you can a bot script even run on an iOS device? Uh, I'm, it's not easy. <laughs> if it was to be sold on a desktop or in a browser right. situation, sure, it I be, see yeah. that. But it's it's being sold on an app, so I'm I don't and think. It, yeah, and an app that's hard to use on the best of days. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, a reminder, follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook at Bronze of Modern Gods. I have been answering so many questions this week on Instagram about this horrible app. Uh, just, you know, people like, I bought something, but I can't see it. And I have to show them, you know, on sure. Instagram how to do it. So make sure you're following us. And enough NFT talk. Please don't think that I've given up on comic books. People it is still no. my first and my, my major love. And uh, this is just a fun thing for me. It's a side. Yeah. John, John is very experimental. And this is one of those things that I think is, <laughs> it's, ten, it's tangential to comic book collecting and his love of, of collecting in general. And so, tech. Yeah. yeah. And tech. Yeah. You know, it's a, kind of a perfect storm. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm interested in it. I, I'm, I'm following it, but I think more of an arm's length than, than John is. 
Yeah, don't hate me for being into it. That's what I'm saying. No. Mm-hmm. Plenty of other reasons to hate me, but this is <laughs> the list is long. The list is endless. <laughs> hey, uh, make sure you give us a like, subscribe if you like this, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live. And leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. We still do read those as well. We haven't forgot about you podcast people. That is going to wrap up this bonus episode. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Richard. Thank you, John. We'll see you next time. Okay, everybody have a great day. Bye.